Well, get ready, because today we're cracking this case wide open. Always up for a good historical puzzle, especially one as iconic as Stonehenge. It's amazing how these stones continue to fascinate us. Right, it's like walking through the English countryside, completely normal, and all of a sudden, boom! Yeah. These massive stones just appear. Talk about an Instagram-worthy moment. But seriously, have you ever thought about the logistics? Like, how on earth did they get those things there? It's mind-boggling when you really dig into it. And remember, those excerpts you mentioned highlighted that we're not just talking about any old rocks. We've got blue stones and the even larger sarsen stones to consider. Yeah, it's not like they just popped down to the local quarry, right? Mm. We're talking about stones weighing up to 25 tons, some hold hundreds of miles. I mean, how do you even begin to wrap your head around moving something that big without, like, a fleet of construction cranes? It's a testament to human ingenuity and, honestly, a bit of a mystery that we're still trying to solve. The blue stones, for instance, originated in the Presley Hills in Wales. That's over 140 miles away, and keep in mind, we're talking about a time long before paved roads, let alone trucks. It really makes you appreciate the how behind these incredible monuments. And, you know, those excerpts mentioned some of the theories. It wasn't just brute strength. They might have used rollers, sledges, even rafts. Imagine the planning, the coordination. Absolutely. It speaks to their understanding of the environment, physics, maybe even astronomy, and the level of social organization required for such a massive project is just incredible to me. So they had the brains, they had the brawn. But the big question is, why go through all that effort? What was the purpose behind Stonehenge? It's the million dollar question, isn't it? And you know what? While we may never have a definitive answer, the sheer effort involved tells us this wasn't just some random pile of rocks for these people. It had meaning. And speaking of meaning, those excerpts you sent over had some really interesting theories, right? Like, what if Stonehenge is more than just a monument? It's like something out of ancient Indiana Jones. But seriously, there are some compelling theories out there. Okay, get me with your best shot. What's the leading theory? Well, one of the most popular theories is that Stonehenge was a kind of massive astronomical observatory. Like a giant prehistoric calendar in the middle of the field. Exactly. Imagine that using the position of the stones to track the movements of the sun, the moon, maybe even the stars. You know, now that you mention it, those excerpts did talk about alignments with celestial events, like solstices. And one of the most striking alignments is with the summer solstice. Oh, yeah, the longest day of the year, right. Right. And the heel stone, that big outlier we talked about. Well, on the summer solstice, the sun rises perfectly over that stone. Whoa, seriously. Seriously. Imagine being there. You're surrounded by these massive stones, the sun's rising, casting long shadows. Okay, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. Uh -huh. But why was that so important to them? I mean, it's not like they had to clock in for work. Well, think about it. Back then, understanding the cycles of nature was crucial for survival. Knowing when to plant, when to harvest. It's like their lives depended on understanding those rhythms. And it probably went beyond just the practical, too, don't you think? I mean, there had to be some spiritual element to it, right? 